This is Atlanta. Atlanta is a vibrant city with a rich history of revitalization. Once known as the Cradle of the Confederacy, Atlanta is now a fast-paced beacon of the New South. This is the Silver Skillet Restaurant. The Silver Skillet Restaurant is located in the Atlantic Station area just southeast of downtown Atlanta. A family-owned restaurant since 1956, the Silver Skillet is known for their traditional Southern-style breakfast and has been featured on numerous lists of places to go and things to eat in Atlanta. Today I'm meeting my friend Hugh Atchison. Hugh is a James Beard Award winning chef, television personality, best-selling author, and the chef owner of notable Atlanta area restaurants 5 and 10, The National, Empire State South, and The Florence in Savannah, Georgia. I'm Ben Vaughn, I'm a chef and author. This is The Breakfast Show. Hey man. Hi Brian. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. Welcome. Thanks. Good to be in Atlanta. Love it. Hanging out. Is it the south? It's like freezing cold, It's right? the south, but it's cold. It's winter. Oh, it's, cool. it's the truth of global warming. It goes up and down. Tell me about breakfast. What's like, for you, for me, it has an insanely significant role in my life. I mean, yeah. In my place, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Yeah. They eat like birds in the morning. I don't know why. We don't. We're not big eaters in the morning. I drink a lot of coffee. Uh, usually, they have oatmeal and fruit and cheese and stuff like that. That's and right. Get out the door. Yeah. So pretty simple and pretty straightforward. We're hermogenly bunch in the morning. Are you? Usually, yeah. <laughs> the whole household? Not, yeah, the whole household. <laughs> you just avoid each other. It's a little challenging. <laughs> you go yeah. your separate ways. Yeah. All right, we'll catch up with you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Uh, you've obviously, you know, clearly, you know, identified who you are and what type of food you love to do. But was there an early time where you were like, I have to do a certain thing or kind of almost like earn your kitchen creds? Or did you feel like you were accepted all at once? Or how did they in go the down? South? Yeah, in the South. You know, it took a little while, but I think that uh, I got accepted by. I don't think it matters where I landed. I just happened to land in Athens, Georgia. If I had landed in Cleveland, I would make it my interest. My interest would be to find the food of that community and make that well, utilizing product that was nearby me. And that's just kind of how I was raised in food in Canada. I think I go into everything saying, you know what, I just want to learn more about this. There's a lot to learn about here. I think you learn more as a non-expert than, than an expert. An ex expert kind of says, you know, I'm done. I've yeah. learned all I can. Go ahead. I'm going to do the uh, country hand skillet. No, it's Southie. Is Southie, it? But you don't want to cut your ham with your regular. you got a regular Can you put double the salt? <laughs> no. no. I'll try. I'm going to give it a shot. It's good. It's yeah. very tasty. Okay. But you have it, honey. And I'll get a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. Would you like mayonnaise, butter, anything on it? Yeah, I'll get a little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of butter. You know, to me, Southern food is not romantic. I don't know why. Food is overall. Okay, the, the, the process of food is romantic. The story of Southern food, to me, has so much pain and so much heartache and so much uh, of, a, of, a, of a, an amazing path and voyage to what it's become. But, I mean, it's art. I mean, it's filled with slavery and... Out of necessity. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you know, that part of, of the story of Southern food to me is not romantic. Yeah. The romance comes now when you walk the fields of a local farmer in Athens and see what they're doing and see them pulling turnips out of the ground. And that's the sort of modern aspect of a new Southern food. Um, but as soon as somebody says New South, I kind of lose interest. New South is often um, unapologetic about the past. So, that's your, um, you're, you're that guy there in the New South, and it's like this, um, you know, 500,000 yeah. other chefs decided to do another New South. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was exactly Yo, like, I know. That was I know. exactly like your New South. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that the, uh, yeah. Flattery, I'm sure. <laughs> Somewhat. I mean, there, there are many chefs who paved the way for this, uh. Ben and Karen Barker up in North Carolina, and Frank Stitt and uh, from Birmingham, and people like that really paved the way for what Sean Brock and Mike Wada and all those people do right now in the South. Um, but I think what we're trying to do is pay homage to the to the past, but be really honest with them. 
uh, we got a lot to fix over the last seven years of food, and uh, but it's like when food became convenient and it was no longer an arduous effort to make good food is the point in time where food got crappy. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of lost skill sets in the world right now. Crappy but awesome. I mean, Salisbury steak in a aluminum foil tray is um, pretty serious. It's, it's, it's seriously <laughs> disgusting. What is that flavor? No, I don't know. It's, 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 <laughs> is that a spice? It is only that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it is... You know, you, you can't mistake it for anything else. So. It permeates everything. It does, even the dessert. Yeah, like, exactly. What's the dessert on it? That's the thing about Southern food. This isn't Southern food. No, no, no. This is, this is breakfast. Yeah, yeah. So, this is greasy food, food which sure. is great. Yeah. Um, the thing about Southern food is Southern food gets this idea that it's all fried chicken and biscuits. And it's not. It's yeah, like it's yeah. greens and tomatoes right. and blackberries and blueberries. You know, it's all these things are contained in the idea of Southern food. Okay. So it's much more vegetable laden than it was made up to be. Totally. We're opening a restaurant right now in Vegas and somebody said um, they heard the word southern it's a it's a meat and three play right um and they said um, uh you know hush puppies fried chicken and collard greens and it's just like yeah you know that's a horrible misconception um it'll be on the menu for sure yeah however yeah it's not the uh it's not what's going to keep the house open no, no. luckily the I think the touristy portion of Southern food is an era that's gone. And it went away in the last couple of years, uh, which is good. It's kind of like fusion food was in the 80s and early 90s. It's like, do I have a problem making um, something with kimchi? And uh, do I have problems making ramen? Do I have problems making dashi now and using them in my food? No. Why is it legitimized now? Right. And in the 80s or 90s, it would have been called bullshit fusion food. Well, it's because the right. bullshit fusion food was uh, wasabi mashed potatoes. It was like simple non-understanding of cultural food. Right. And now people are starting to understand southern food more than they ever have before. The legitimate southern food. The and real southern simple food. And clean. Right. Right. And so the a reverence for bringing in ingredients that are southern into New York City, I think it's cooler now than it used to be. It's not. It's not just a shortcut. Does that make sense? What's the um, how do they how do you balance four restaurants? Um, travel? Yeah, uh, you don't. You do the best you can. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's what can you do? Right? It's like spinning plates more than anything. I mean, it's, right. it's hard. More honestly, what I've come to terms with is I kind of like a baseball manager. Here goes, sweetheart. Come on. Thank you. Awesome. Kind of like a baseball manager. Yeah. You know, my job is to put the team on the field. There we go. Thank you. And that will kill you. Um, so my job, <laughs> my job is to put the team on the field and organize the batting order and figure out who's working well where and what, how they're doing and and adjust things all the time. And then once in a while, I need to, you know. Pulling somebody from the bullpen and fix some issues, and that's what I do. So we design new things and constantly working on new stuff. But you know, it's uh, you're never done. Holy God! Yeah, that'll that'll be it for me on that fight. The uh, <laughs> are you serious? Oh my gosh! Um, you know, if if she was telling you that it's really salty, that really really means it's salty. <laughs> You want to try these? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Um, the uh, My doctor doesn't like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some people definitely changing the uh, the scenario of what the food is all about. There's some people uh, opening up a great neighborhood restaurants. Uh, Boca Lupa is great. A little Italian place uh, that opened up. Um, so there there are places like that in existence. I find the uh, amount of Szechuan food and the amount of really great Korean food is expanding wildly. And it's not just Beaver Highway, it's all the way up in Sewanee now, um, which is great. I mean, really interesting parts of the sort of exurbs are really piping up with really amazing, great restaurants that have value. And uh, so I think we're appreciating that. I think that authenticity is coming. You can't copy something to a number of iterations and have it ongoing be successful, it catches up to you eventually. Right. So, and people lose interest. So it's good. It's good. Never easy to move on, but we have to move on. Yeah. So, charcuterie. There's a lot of charcuterie out there right now. 
we're guilty of it too, but there's a lot of it out there right now. <laughs> there is a lot of it. Yeah. But it's good. There's a place for it. I think we it. understand it more than ever. I think that... Yeah, uh, I would hope so by this yeah, point. Yeah, by this point, we better. <laughs> or we really got nothing, no, no excuses. That's right. You know, I, uh, I have a real hatred of Facebook, um, but Twitter I handle all by myself, and, uh, and that's really dangerous. You know when people have on their Twitter account not, you know, does not represent the views of my company or whatever? That needs to be in bold with mine because I'm a complete jackass on Twitter. Thanks, Thanks man. Yeah. It's awesome. Thanks for the suggestion. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> it's food with history. <laughs> and a lot of salt. <laughs> and salty was the way of. Get a check. Please. Mm, mm, mm.